city manager had a meeting just today with uh, Anne Marie Despain and uh, the account, the uh, finance director of the JPA. Um, and would you like to give a, a brief update on that? Uh, so, because I think that we are chipping away at the <laughs> at the wall and getting some uh, some good. Yeah, in the meeting today, Robert and I met with uh, Anne-Marie Despain, the director and the director of finance, Pandil, and we discussed a number of issues, some of which included uh, how to get that accounting to the town uh, for, the, for the past three to five years of you know, direct versus indirect services, some kind of a line item budget of where things went. Uh, and uh, to Vice Mayor Carlson's point about the needs assessment, <coughs> the response was that, that was a direct service mm -hmm. that the county uh, advise that they're going to do for the African Library, prepare the needs assessment, that came right off the top. So before the town had an opportunity to weigh in on whether or not we wanted a needs assessment, that came off the top and reduced the amount of funds that went to the donor. And so they're, they're saying that that needs assessment cost, what, $33,000, $34,000, something like that, which, you know, that was back in 2009. Right. So we, we talked about that. So by mid-June, uh, Robert and Pandia will be working on a summary sheet of the last three to five years kind of a line item budget for us to kind of look at the council to see at least what's transpired, where things have gone, what's indirect, what's direct service, and uh, based for what, basically. Okay. Uh, we also talked about uh, opportunities for you know, the mayor as a representative to the library JPA to have that study session with the group to talk about services that are part of the library services component in the JPA that the town could do on their own to, to raise the level of service of the library to the community. We talked about uh, building the, the new library as part of the, the Civic Center uh, and what to look for in that package. And also we talked about, in generality, uh, library services of the future, preparing for the next gen library, how to do that, and that many libraries these days have a foot in the past and a foot in the future. And sometimes it's hard to bridge that gap, but uh, that's something they want to do as well. So I'd like to open it for public comments at this time, if there's any member of the public that would like to speak on this uh, library JPA issue and the colleague's memo that we have in front of us, the four items that, um, that we're going to be uh, asking council to direct staff to, to, to do. Yes. Sanders of Hawthorne Drive. I've been involved with the library here in Atherton since 1986. Um, I would just caution everybody in the audience to follow the money. The library was not an issue until we learned that we had some money. The minute we learned we had some money, people started going after it, particularly when they wanted to build a town center. And that has been the story of of the library in Atherton ever since. Li uh, library services have been provided in Atherton by the um, county library system since 1929. Library services have grown every year. We are an award-winning library, and I think it's unfair to say that the JPA or the library system is misusing our funds when they have accumulated so much money for Atherton. I think the misuse of funds is by the town of Atherton. They were very happy to have all those funds in the town of Atherton until the Atherton Town Council started to try to take those funds away for other purposes. And that was the only reason when the Blue Ribbon Task Force for the town center made six recommendations, every one of them starting with library funds, that's when they wanted the funds back in the library. To protect those funds for library services, that's what they're designated for. They're not designated for other things. I think also you should look very hard at Menlo Park, which is now closing their library on Tuesday. They don't have enough funds for their library. We cannot afford to have our own library. I think also that when we go and we outsource so much of our town services. We have successfully outsourced the library services in Atherton since 1929, and I think the county has done a marvelous job. 
and those funds are to be used for library services, not for building town centers. Thank you very much. Any other members of the public? Yes. My name is John Davey, 38 Maple Avenue. Uh, I feel like I'm hearing, I'm channeling Charles Barsala here. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, it's like Yogi Berra said, it's deja vu all over again. Uh, I think William Gridley and, and Joan were on the Blue Ribbon Task Force, and I, and I was on that task force, and I, I, this is like a rehashing of all of the things that we talked about. Um, it's, it's kind of history repeating itself, and just hearing the same things talked about in just a little different slant, which is, it's interesting. I mean, it's, it's just, it's... It's like having perspective uh, rather than dealing with perceptions about about this fund, and and I think Joan said it very clearly. You know, we on the Blue Ribbon Task Force, we were looking at that money to build the town center. I mean, that's that's precisely what we were we wanted to do, and um, and and I think she's right. You know, you go you follow the money, you go where the money is, and then you how can you use it? What can you use it for? And it's just kind of sitting there, or is it? You know, I mean, it's needed. It's probably needed to maintain the library. But how how do we have a nine hundred thousand dollars surplus every every year? So anyway, uh, they they probably have been good stewards of it, and hopefully, you can work out an arrangement where it, that money can be used for uh, a greater purpose. And I don't know why a town center couldn't and a library together couldn't be part of that greater purpose. So thanks for letting me talk about that. Thank you very much. Any other members of the public? Any other members of the public? Thank you very much. Um, just for everybody to know, uh, I think Elizabeth, I'm going to quote you, 72,000 people used, visited the library the year before when you said that last year. So it does get used. It goes up 2% every year. So there, we do have a need for a library. Um, I'm on the Friends of the Atherton Library Community Library, FACL. Uh, and I may not be exactly correct, but I'm, I, as I remember, the idea of the needs assessment came from the FACL, not from the JPA. And the JPA, rep or the uh, uh, library manager at the time, was the one who carried that back to them after at our request. So I just want to make sure that that's accurate. Well, I think part of the problem was that the library had been deemed to be seismically unsafe in 2009 by the council. And so we needed to do something about the library, and that was the impetus for doing a needs assessment, because it was unsafe, and it still is. Okay. Good. Thank, Thank you. you very much. All right. Thank you. Any other members of the public? And then I'll close the public comment period and bring it back to council. I'd like at this time, um, since council members have already made their uh, comments, to um, to call for a motion to direct staff uh, according to the items outlined in the staff report, items number one through four, and return to council with their findings at the June council meeting. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd actually like to make two motions. I'll make one point at a time. Okay. <coughs> Let's hear what you have to say. The, um, uh, first motion is to direct staff to undertake a comprehensive review of the possible options for providing library services to the town, which should include comparing the current JPA model with other viable models, including cost and other considerations, report back to council within a six month time period. That's my motion. I'll second that. Any discussion? Well, uh, and as I mentioned during my, my uh, comments, um, in November we had certain findings, and so uh, I guess I would like to make sure that those findings that Mr. Connors came up and presented to us are, are made public and that we take those into consideration uh, in making any subsequent work. Because um, if I recall some of the, some of the findings that uh, Mr. Connors had um, might sway thinking one way or the other. Bill? Just, uh, oh, excuse me. I was just going to say, Bill, that's my second motion. I'll, I'll 
Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that has anything to do with this motion, the, the first motion that he's made, because uh, it has. Um, yes. All we're asking is for the staff to look at all feasible options, and then I think that. Well, I, I, but I, I think that they're different. I think that, uh, and I appreciate that mm -hmm. you were going to have that as a second motion, and I, and I agree, but I think that they should be flip-flop because one may preclude staff from wasting time on the other. Well, as in, in my opinion, based on what I recall from that session. Is there any other uh, discussion on this? Okay, your um, comments are noted. We're going to call for, there's a motion and a second. I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'll be opposed because I think they should be flip-flop. Hmm. Okay. So uh, the motion passes three to one. And so um, you have a yes, second motion? Yes, the second motion has to do with the, uh, the donor funds. And um, because there is, as I as alluded to earlier, there there is uh, certainly a legal issue that, that uh, needs to be, uh, be addressed. Uh, but I move that we direct staff to, uh, first of all, tr try to gain agreement with JPA to have the donor funds uh, reside on the Atherton books, um, and uh, that the agreement as to the process for handling the library tax money in Atherton should uh, 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 re reflect a, a broader usage of those funds, and that we need to make sure that uh, if we do withdraw, Ether does withdraw from the JPA, that uh, the money will be available for uh, Ether. Okay. Um, I have a comment about that and maybe no. an <coughs> There's no second yet. Oh, do I have a second? Second. Okay, discussion. I would like to amend that to make it very clear that uh, in the uh, analysis of what the donor city funds could be used for, that in no way would they be used for any uh, uh, construction project having to do with the new civic center. It is for library services only, uh, either in Atherton or other library affiliated services in other uh, maybe underfunded jurisdictions or uh, other ways that we could uh, use those library donor funds. Well, I think that's okay, but you remember the library is part of that civic center construction. I understand, but just because they are, it is part of that civic center construction, it can be carved out yeah. of the yeah, of, of the uh, sure. total project cost. It's done all the time with other joint partnerships where you know a, a, a group. That's fine. Yes. Yeah, Madam Mayor, I'm happy with the motion. I would point out because the issue was raised earlier tonight by law. All due respect to the Blue Ribbon Committee, those funds are tax funds that are tied to a specific use. It's like a, mm -hmm. it's like a special fund. Yes. They can only be used for library purposes. Even if they were used in a joint project, mm -hmm. those funds would have to be tracked and used only for library purposes. And right now, under the JPA, the JPA's role is that of an overseer, and they would look at it and say, almost like an auditor. Yes, those are being used for library funds, or no, we disagree, they're not, and no, we'd have to work it out. Right. Uh, so, so, but I just wanted to be very, very clear, because I think that there is continued misperception by some residents that there is uh, a, a, a plot or a conspiracy or a, uh, a, an attempt by uh, members of uh, the community center advisory group or people wanting uh, to uh, build a new police department, a new administration town center, that somehow they're uh, wanting to use that uh, library donor funds. That is in no way, shape, or form um, the, the case at all. So I just want that to be put into the motion in some way. Accepted. So, um, two things. First off, we also had a, an election last November that right. said no taxpayer dollars, these are taxpayer dollars, will be used for the, so I think we also have coverage on that. Um, but uh, I guess I, I may have misheard, uh, I guess, the, the motion. 
because I, I thought I'd heard that they also were asking staff to find a way to broaden the use of the library funds. So maybe we've covered that off, but within the sure. main library services. Within the main yeah. of library services. Well, I thought and, that that's and what. That's, and that's actually going to. I thought that's what you were going to talk to the JPA about coming yes. to an agreement with. If yes. they're the overseers, then you know that we're going to need to. There get are members of the JPA who want to clarify and fully understand the language in the JPA agreement. The JPA was only formed in 1999, mm -hmm. and it has been revised in 2001. So the agreement is a document, and it is like any document, kind of full of you know potential holes or you know not clear clear and so the the three donor city uh, uh, cities they want to have clarity and they want the chair of the JPA she says I'm going to go out here on a limb because I want to be able to use some of our excess money to uh, you know maybe fund um, one of the other uh, jurisdictions who is underfunded you know, and at the way it's stipulated now, it looks like they're precluded from doing that. And so I think it's... It has to be within the town right now. Right. Right now, it has to be within your town. And so I think that the, the feeling of uh, being more uh, generous, uh, philanthropic, or, you know, somehow spreading the wealth, if you will, or whatever, I think is, is something that's, that's part of the, uh, the, the, the approach here. So I think uh, Vice Mayor Carlson's motion uh, to um, under undertake uh, the advocate for the return of the donor funds and understand donor funds use is, um, is good. I just want to make sure that we say that in that motion that there's no way that um, you know, it is going to be earmarked for any um, town center development project just to put to rest any misconception by any resident from, but, from here but, on out. But I'm, I'm still concerned about the broadening because um, if we're going to do broadening, then then I think that uh, perhaps, Madam Mayor, we need to have a discussion item where we would decide in a public forum what we think broadening is or isn't and agree on that, and then you carry that forward to the JPA, and then we would work within the guise of the JPA as you're negotiating that. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm concerned about we asking staff to figure out a way to broaden the use of it, and then and then suddenly we we never bring that to the to the light of day for everybody else. Uh, you know, that's my that's my concern. I've got no issue with going to understand this. I've got no issue with with uh, making sure that the accountability is there and, and uh, uh, you know, that we have full cognizance over how our money is spent because, as I said, I, I think that tax dollars for Atherton need to be spent in Atherton. And, um, but, uh, but I am concerned about the broadening aspect. So, uh, you know, if we could strike those words, I would appreciate it. Uh, and I would, and you would have my full support on it. If you, if you can't, then I, I'll have to take a second view. Well, Bill, I think the, the, the intent here is to, yeah. is to have, is to have greater flexibility in terms of what library services encompasses. And it still would be up to the council, however, in the future, to determine okay how those funds would be used. I don't think that we can sit here tonight and, or in the next, next uh, six months and uh, want to uh, construct uh, a, uh, a too specific uh, usage thing. But I think what we need to have is the flexibility so the future councils can address the issue on a line item by line item basis, which they can't do now. Right. I, 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 I'm going to close the discussion just because I think we need to move on here. So okay. I, I think we understand your position just because. Well, I thought we could get it. to a point where, where we got if, if, uh, so if, if you would I'd indulge like me maybe, for just one more minute. I'll, I'll, I'll indulge you. I just want to reread, I want to revisit the motion so that we understand what the motion is was made. Okay. Can we, can we do that? I have a motion. Um, you don't have a motion? Well, I, 
You start uh, another motion. I, I wrote let's just, down, let's just I wrote down hear the, what we're arguing yeah. about, okay? They, they I just want to be really clear. You want staff, <laughs> staff, I took that to, to be predominantly kind of like the number three, staff, the city attorney, to look at the legal issue of ensuring that the JPA money stay, that they, that they now are looking to put into their coffers on our behalf instead stay with the, the town right. and ensure the money would stay with the town and then look at how they can be used going forward um, under any of the scenarios they might come up with. And it does talk in three, which I thought was kind of wrapped into that. Right. Um, if we elected to withdraw, um, which would be more under the first uh, motion, what would we be what would be looking at and how the money would then be um, under the JPA, what would happen to the money? And with, with the added proviso that uh, uh, library services would have to be used for library services, which means it could not be used for uh, town center or, uh, construction, construction. Other, other than for the library. Right. That right. Essentially restate the law, which is fine. Yeah. Sure. I don't see that that's a problem because we haven't used the word broadening. So why don't we, I, I think that if you want to say, you know, argue some more, I'll let you argue some more. I think that if, if you would amend it and say that the half staff have a, an agenda item where we actually discuss what it is, that, that would be fine for me. Then we would at least have an open forum where we can possibly discuss it. Uh, I'm personally opposed to taking the library construction project money and, and volume money and things like that, operational money, and giving it to the schools who have their own tax base. I am 100% against that. So if that's what we're planning on doing, then I'm going to vote no on this one as well. Good. Okay. Yeah, there is no plan. Yeah, there is no plan. So, George? Can I just make a, maybe a perspective comment? Library services is not really, it's actually poorly defined, if at all, within the library JPA. It is. So really? any activity that the town wants to do with the library funds that goes beyond the brick and mortar and operations of this current facility is going to be evaluated by the library JPA as well as the town council before any programs are implemented. So I, I agree that that if we're looking at a proposal for an opportunity to broaden the interpretation of what library services is, that needs to be a discussion possibly of the city council what program we might want to do. But before we do that, the library JPA is going to also discuss it. So I, I, I just think it's not broadened, but more fully define what donor funds can be used for and um, yeah, and broaden. Ma Ma Madam Mayor, can, can I suggest, I think, I understand both both issues and people are looking for clarity and definitional issues here. Mm -hmm. Problem is, that's what those two motions should bring you as a product. The product should really clarify what those things can be used for and what, you know, what kinds of services we can direct as opposed to really we've ceded to the JPA. I think that until you have those, to, to say that we're broadening anything, or that we're, I, I think you ought to find out what we're really doing and what we can do before you have that discussion. I think, I think Councilmember Whitmer, his point is well taken, but I think that's exactly what will happen when these reports come back to you. Then you have the opportunity to decide what do you want to do with it. Because right now you'd just be talking semantics, I think, if you talked about, quote, broadening, because I'm not sure what it would mean. Maybe. We'll take a look at what, how the motion reads, and we'll. Uh, but um, once it's written up, but we have a motion and a second, then amended and an acceptance. I'm going to call for the vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'm going to abstain because I haven't seen the la the language. So I'll abstain yeah, at this point. Uh, Okay, we're going to move on to item number 18, which is the use of a polling firm for the parcel tax renewal. And we have a city manager's report on this. Thank you, Madam Mayor and members of the council. Unless renewed, the parcel tax will expire in 2014. In 2012-13, revenue from the parcel tax will total approximately $1.86 million. Revenues are split 60% to direct frontline law enforcement and the remainder to public infrastructure capital projects. 
the 1213, 1.116 is allocated toward police services and 744,000 toward capital infrastructure. Should the council desire to use, or should the council desire to place uh, the parcel tax measure renewal on the November 2013 ballot, successful passage will prevent a break in revenue. It will require, as is mentioned earlier, a 66 and two thirds vote to pass. Should the measure fail in November, it could be returned for a subsequent election in 2014 before it formally expires. In 2009, the town considered the use of a consulting firm to assist. At that time, the council opted not to use a public information and education firm and instead opted to use Godby Research, a survey firm, to assist with the design and implementation of a community survey in connection with the ballot measure. In March, staff prepared, uh, March of 2013, staff prepared a report for the council detailing the possibility of using a consulting firm to assist again with the public information component, but this time to include the evaluation of alternative revenue sources. The council opted to forego the use of the consulting firm, deciding instead to focus on the partial tax renewal and decide on the possibility of using a consulting firm to assist with alternative revenue sources at some point in the future. Staff obtained three estimates from polling slash survey firms to assist the town with the 2013 parcel tax renewal, should it desire to do so. The three proposals are from Godby Research, Tramatola Advisors, True North Survey, and National Citizen Survey. The latter is a suggestion from a local resident to allow the town to obtain a larger citizen satisfaction data as well as polling data for the parcel tax renewal. Uh, you have before you in the staff report the three proposals from the three different firms. Staff's recommendation is that the council direct staff to work with Tramatola Advisors of True North Survey to assist with the polling and survey analysis for the parcel tax renewal. Uh, their estimate came in at 14,990 with a mixed survey option consisting of phone and mail ballots or mailed uh, surveys. And I believe a representative from True North was going to be here this evening. He's waited patiently in the back since early on uh, to answer any questions the council might have on their particular proposal. And that concludes the staff report. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, City Manager. Um, are the, does Council have any clarifying or technical questions at this time just to ask staff before I open it up for public comment about this item? I just one yes. question. Um, George, could you tell us what the uh, history is as far as pass and fail rate when we utilize the uh, polling firm? When we use the utilize the polling firm? Or something similar to uh, not in connection, but I, I mean, I've got the pass fail data for the parcel tax, which I know a number of members of the council may understand as well, but not in connection to its use with a polling firm. Yeah. Anyone else? Uh, yes. George, do you have, have you worked with this firm? So? No, I never have. You, you have got references or talked to them on the Yes. Yes, and they've come back all positive that they're free. I see they're a former firm. firm. Could be uh, principles of a firm that was good. I, I have a, a, just a quick question because in your analysis here, it does say that National Citizen Survey does um, would do a mail survey, and but no report or analysis. And I did receive an email from a resident, Peter Carpenter, who's recommending that, that we use this uh, from the National Citizen Survey, and said that yes, they in fact do do reports and analysis, and sent it was. You know, lots of reports, and I just didn't have time this afternoon to scroll through everything and look for that, that uh, analysis. The, the analysis and reporting that National Citizen Survey does is basically on the citizen satisfaction component of the survey. They don't provide the analysis, the election timing discussion, the um, ballot measure crafting uh, assistance that the other firms do. Okay. So let's open it up to public comment. If there are any members of the public who'd like to speak on this item, uh, the use of a polling uh, firm uh, for the parcel tax renewal. Um, I'd like to uh, maybe uh, ask uh, the representative from Tramatola to come up and just uh, tell us a little bit about your firm. We'll keep you to the three minute warning. Uh, good evening, Madam Mayor, uh, members of council, I'm Dr. Tim McClarney. I'm um, actually the president of True North Research, we're the first the firm that will be doing the survey. Um, we're a firm that specializes in working with California cities as well as other public agencies around the state on doing this type of research. Um, we've worked on about 800 studies for public agencies, more than 300 for cities, and, and the bulk of that was on what we call revenue measure feasibility studies, which is what you're discussing here this evening. 
the nature of those studies is we first look at the, the ultimate question of is it feasible, and what I mean by feasible, if the council were to choose to place a measure on, a, on an upcoming ballot, does that have a reasonable chance of being successful? Uh, as you might imagine, the answer to that question isn't always yes. Sometimes we work with communities, and no matter how we look at the data, there's not a way to, to see how you can get from where you are today to where you need to be successful on a near-term ballot, and we're very frank about that. Um, most of the time, though, when it comes to communities, uh, certainly with the types of services that uh, you're going to be funding with this parcel tax, uh, we do find support. And then the second purpose of this study is really to help you go about how you structure this measure in a way it's consistent with what your community would like to fund out of this measure should it be successful. Um, and over the our course of our uh, tenure, my business partner and I working together as a two-person team have passed uh, a couple hundred uh, measures. Uh, we wound up putting about $20 billion in voter-approved tax measures on ballots um, um, and have sort of helped that process along through our research. So that's a little bit about us. I'm certainly happy to answer any questions you might have about us or our methodology. Okay. Um, I have a question. The City of San Carlos survey, uh, when did you do that and did it pass? We did a couple different surveys for the city of San Carlos. We had a resident satisfaction survey most recently, which was a, not a political uh, uh, measure. We also did a study for them looking at the possibility of either a local sales tax or a UUT. Mm -hmm. um, the recommendation at that point was to do a sales tax. Um, that measure ultimately was not successful. They, uh, from my understanding, they decided to forego having professional assistance on their public relations and, and campaign component to that, that they, they went independent and um, sometimes that process can, can not work out as mm. well as if you have a professional there. Mm. Mm. Any other members of the council? If we were to approve this tonight, uh, when would we first be getting uh, information that we could use? Um, we would certainly work on a timeline that was consistent with what the city staff was and was able, and if there's a subcommittee of the council was able to work with us. Normally this process takes about eight weeks front to back. From the point we sit down and start talking about research objectives and drafting questionnaires to the point where we have a full-blown report back to council, that's typically about eight weeks. And we have top-line results that usually in about five, meaning that we have the data, we just haven't done all the analysis yet. I've got some comments, but not questions, not no. Anything for I, Just a question to clarify. Um, you mentioned eight weeks, and we're going to be going into summertime. Do those contacts, if they're telephone contacts, occur on the weekend? Or are you trying to get our residents in? This isn't telephone. It, well, it is, actually. It's, um, it's a mix. Um, if I can explain that methodology for a second. And it's one that we've developed working with small affluent communities. Um, we recently did this in Del Mar, for example, which is very affluent, very small. <laughs> um, it's challenging doing a phone survey only in a community like yours because you don't have a lot of individuals and they're harder to reach. Um, and so if you were like strictly on phone, I'm guessing 150 to 200 completes would be the max you could squeeze out of a telephone-based survey using the phone. You could, you could rely then just on mail, as some people had suggested. The problem with mail is you also tend not to get a great response rate, and you get what's known as a very biased response rate. The people who turn in the mail surveys aren't necessarily reflective of your likely voter population in the community, and so although you have maybe more results, they don't necessarily reflect that, that, that audience and therefore don't generalize to your likely voter population the way you need to have it be in order to have reliable estimates of what's going to happen on election day. What we have done over time is in a mix of this. We blend them. and so we will mail first and follow back with phones. And what that has enabled us to do is by using both of those methods, you boost your, your overall participation rate because you're able to get some people with mail you wouldn't get on phone and some people on phone who don't return mail. And we're also able to better control the sample design by following up and targeting our mail calls, I mean our phone calls. Um, and through that, uh, we're, you know, in Del Mar, for example, we managed to squeeze 600 interviews out of that community, which is, if we had gone to phone, we'd been lucky to get 200 only. So that's the, the methodology we proposed here, and it's particular to your demographic. I have a, I have a question. Have you ever used uh, social media or you know emails? Um, we're seeing many, many more of our residents respond to 
electronic. Well, but in, the, and in this case, what we're doing, we're actually using, we're using mailed invitations with follow-up phone call recruiting. So you have mail and phone for recruiting. In terms of how we collect the information, you can take the interview on phone or you can go online. And so, and what we tend to find is if you, if, if you send a letter to somebody and opens up and it gives them the option either going online right then and filling out the survey, or we will have a follow-up phone call with them, that's the methodology we're using. When you take a bulky survey and mail it out to people, the response rate you get to that is actually lower than if you just ask them to go online and, and we've made it easy for you, click on this mm -hmm. you know, website and you're good to go. I mean, things like SurveyMonkey? Yeah, it's, uh, our system is actually integrated, so it's, it's, it's web on one side and phone on the other, they write to the same database, but it's similar. Our website is like a SurveyMonkey, only more powerful, and it's the, the nice thing about it is we have one database, one sample that, that is reading, and so we're not using a web survey over here and then calling off a separate list and trying to compare our samples. It's all integrated in one suite. Um, so thank you very much. Thank we'll um, let uh, other people speak. And when were you have comments? Sure, sure. Um, first off, you know, I'd like to say, you know, as I, as I stated in the March meeting when a similar item was brought forward, you know, I, I think that we need to still, as a, as a council, have a discussion item on the parcel tax before we make any investments. I'm not saying that uh, we can't do that very quickly, but I do think we need to have that. You know, given the fact that, you know, we're ending the year in, in the black and we've got finance reports that we're looking at, look like things are moving forward, I think we should discuss not only the need, which I think that we that there still is a, a need, but the level of the projected need, as well as how we're going to how we're going to reallocate the uh, the tax dollars. Um, perhaps you know it's been recommended by the APOA that we look at the reallocation of that, and I certainly uh, endorse that. Uh, so I do think that we should have that type of discussion, and I think public input is is key here. So I just think doing the same as just because. We did it before and it's expiring, we should just move forward, I think is a mistake, and I think that the citizens deserve us to show a little more leadership in this. So we should actually discuss that. However, this is not the, the agenda item that's on here, so I'm not going to go any further. So, but to the point of this agenda item, I'm, I'm a little concerned about sending, spending tax dollars on items for a survey such as this, when these surveys will actually be doing potential.